I'm going to go ahead and get started with uh, the session, though nobody's shown up yet. Hopefully, uh, I started a little late because of my daughter's birthday, so people might not have been here. I want to create a sort of simple Simon memory game. There's an example on the Scratch website that if I just start to play it and start with easy, so it highlighted one of the sections and asked us to repeat it. And now it highlighted it twice, to that same section twice. So this is like a Simon, there's a simple toy called Simon that you can use, similar to this. So what would you need to do that sort of a, a game? And one of the nice things about Scratch is that you can use lists. So that's a new feature under variables. There's make a list here, as well as make a variable. And what you're going to need to do is keep track of, you're going to have to have a computer player sort of pick randomly one of these four colors. So here it's got blue, red, yellow, green. Randomly pick one of these four colors and add it to a list of uh, that you're supposed to be repeating. And then after the computer takes the turn showing you what the pattern is, then the user needs to take a turn trying to replicate the pattern. So we're going to need two lists. We're going to need a list for the computer pattern and a list for the user pattern. Uh, so that's a nice example of using a list. So let's try to do that in Scratch. We're going to do it a little simpler than what they showed. So we've opened up Scratch here. I'll get rid of the cat. And we're going to want to put some of the scripts probably on the background on the stage. We'll make it a little easier because it's not necessarily belonging to any of the sprites, so the game setup. And then our sprites, I'm going to go ahead and paint just a simple sprite here. So click on the paint brush. And I'll do a rectangle. And then I'll start with uh, maybe a green one. So a green rectangle. And I can grow or shrink that to get to the size I want. Oh, we have a little black square there. Hmm. So if I go to Costumes and edit it, I can get rid of that black spot that I don't want on there using the erase. So there I go. And that's a fairly good size for what I want to do. I'll put it over in this corner. And I'm going to just put four rectangles of different colors and use those rather than the circle that they had before. And I'm going to need some way to uh, name each of these. So I'm going to call this one just one rather than sprite one. So this will be one. And we're going to need some, we're going to need a list. So I'm going to go back to variables and make a list. And I'm going to have a computer uh, list. So keeping track of what the computer has selected. So I'll just call that computer list. And you'll see that that created a bunch of tiles, add thing to the list, delete number one of the list, insert thing at one of the list, replace item one of the list, get item one of the list, uh, the length of the list, and does it contain that thing. So these are things that all get created when we say we want to create a list. And it automatically displays the list up here. Uh, right now it's empty, and the length is zero. There's nothing in it. And I'm going to make another variable, so another list. And this time, this is going to be the user list. So this will keep track of what the user has done. And we can look at them now. We certainly wouldn't want to show them during the game. And what we're going to want to do when you first start the game, so we'll start with our scripts for the stage, so sort of the game things we'll put on the stage. So usually in Scratch, when you start a Scratch project, you use when the green flag is clicked. So what we're going to want to do is um, add a random 1 through 4. If we've named our sprites 1, 2, 3, 4, we can add a random out of 1 through 4 to the list. And then we can broadcast. We're going to use a lot of broadcast and receive in this in order to notify that, OK, now it's time for the computer to show the list, to show what's in the list, to do the, the pattern. And then we'll wait for the user to repeat the pattern. We'll compare. We'll say that the user is done when the pattern lengths are the same, when the two list lengths are the same. And then if you mess up, if you don't have the right order, you're going to have the user is going to lose. Um, otherwise, you might make some sort of sound to know that they, they did do that round right. We could also use a couple more variables. Uh, make just a regular variable that keeps track of uh, the length of the computer list and the length of the user list. So how many things is the computer wanting you to click on and how many things have you clicked on so you can sort of keep track. Um, so I can just call it computer and make another variable user. 
so we'll keep track of that length of the list as well that way. Um, showing the user how many things are in the list so they can keep track of it. So now what every time we, we run through uh, the computer showing, we, we create, we add something else to the list, we add the computer show what's in the list, then we have the user try to replicate what's in the list. Then we're going to again want to go back to adding something. So we're going to, when the green flight is clicked, I'm going to first start off with just a, uh, a reset of the list. We need to clear out the list is one of the things we're going to need to do. And so whenever we start the green flag clicked, we're going to empty the list. So because after we add things to it, it won't be empty anymore. So I can do a simple repeat under control. There's a repeat x times. So I can say repeat and then the length of the list is the number of times. So when it's zero, as it is right now, it's not going to do this code at all. But later on, when you do add things to the list, you will want to clear out the list when you first start. So uh, repeat the length of computer list. Uh, we want to delete everything in it. So delete one of computer list will end up deleting everything in the list each time because the first element will get deleted and then the second element will move to the first. We'll delete that one and it keeps, it'll keep deleting until everything's gone. Uh, we want to do the same thing with the user list. So I could actually be easier just to copy that with a stamp and change it to user list. You have to be very careful to make sure these match all the time or you can really have trouble. But we always want to set things, uh, scratch doesn't initialize things for you. By default, you need to set them. So I also want to reset our variables. So computer to zero and user to zero. So that's always the first thing I usually do in Scratch when the green flag is clicked is go ahead and reset everything. Oh, I see someone has joined us. Uh, welcome. So I'm just typing a message. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm good. Hi, Vera. How you doing? 